POT damage like Lunara. Oh, are we ready for the next game though? Infernal Shrines, my personal favorite map to cast and play. But uh, there's something that you said there. It's a race against death. Yeah. I really hope the, the designer of Mouthfield hears that because I'm sure they're like, nailed it. <laughs> He's on one knee right now with his really like, up. It's like, perfect. Yeah. But we are in this game now. Flame is lame. Enjoyed the luxuries of first pick, first ban. They've demonstrated the value of Mouthfield. They ban out Genji. Will we see a Mouthfield ban here? And uh, the team on the right is, sorry? They are bringing back J How. Oh, yes, bring back J How. Of course. Who was in the I chat love... earlier tonight? How's it going, J How? I love J How. I got to hang out with him a whole bunch in Sweden. Good guy. Mouthfield banned out from uh, bring back J How. Perhaps they watched the last game or they just don't feel like dealing with him. Either or, it's a pretty decent call. A very sound decision, especially if you call any part of that last. Uh fireworks display between flame is lame and hunter and first and the tree oh, continues Kyla. Right. first pick tassa i mean if it if it ain't broke don't fix it i tell you what you know that tassa you know, right i tell but... you what that was. hey go on now <laughs> you picked that tassa our first pick boy uh <laughs> so... <laughs> Dang, that's the Canadian <laughs> trying to do a Southern American yes, accent. I don't yes. know how it works, but uh, it, it, glorious. Nice. <laughs> Never changed, Kyle. Never changed. <laughs> Bring back Jay out. Dahak is on the table. Uther is up. Um, you know, we are on Infernal Shrine, so you could even see stuff like Gul'dan, but usually you see him fall on the wayside recently just because of the, like we were talking last week, the dive meta that's basically right now, you know? Um, like I said, Dahak, Greymane, Uther available. Um, what are the picks for bring back J-How? Yeah, I don't think we'll see Golden. and I agree with you. In this current meta, he's something of a sitting duck. Uh, not surprised to see him drop out of the prior prioritization chain for sure. Every last second gets used for bring back J-How before they decide. No Zarya Uther, okay. Zarya. It's pretty early commitment to Zarya, but perhaps they have, you know, a good plan going forward with it. Hey, I wanted to really quickly comment. Uh, Radic in chat was saying, time for Tranquility to make a comeback as a response to Mouthfeel. That's a, that's a decent idea. It's not bad, dude. Hmm. Um, but that's not shabby at all. Yeah. Back to this draft, flame is lame. You know, is it just the bright wing tracer again? Ooh, Vala Ariel? Let's I mean, go. one could do worse than the lock in the angel of hope right now. You mm -hmm. got Tassadar along with Vala. You can have auto attacks for days. You turn Vala into a superhero, put a cape on her back. <laughs> but you make a really good point, Kyle. The early prioritization, and we do see Ariel. Zarya Oof. showing up this, this early? Yeah. That's Skyler. Chogo. <laughs> no, man. I don't think so. I don't think so. Dude. Don't, uh, you're making me sweat. Don't say it was, that. It was, a Chogo, that. it was a Chogo comp that knocked UTA out of the crucible. Mm, Chogo, is it really? I don't know. That's pretty Dude, that, wild. That, that this will be a ball build. The but silence dude. bowling ball comp. No, that's gnarly. But do you really ban Genji when you go Chogo? I don't know. No, the flame flame is lame ban Genji. Oh, sorry. Yeah, flame is. Yeah, do you I'm, ban I'm, Genji I'm, when you plan on going Chogo? No, I'm thinking that bring back J How go Chogo. Oh, okay. Hey, Uther Zarya Chogo. You ban okay Anubarak. You ban Mouthfield, two percent. You know, a percentage based damage dealer and, and a cocoon. cocoon. Okay. Chogo. I'm telling you, I'm, oh. I'm telling you right now, Kyle. I will donate ten dollars to the prize pool if Chogol shows up right now. Okay, if we see it, I am in awe and super stoked. But the gray main ban was like perfect from Flame is Lame because I would say that's pretty much exactly what they'd be looking to go for here. Uh, now they're pretty much stuck going with a mage as their. You, you gotta know, go, Chog dude. The gray main ban. I, you I, just you no longer have to worry about forty percent of Chogol's health bar going away. Oh, it's so crazy though. That Show is wild. Call. It's the call. That's the play. Is it? Is it the it's play? It's the play. We'll have to ask Jay how on this one, man. It uh, is the play. I mean, at this point, I feel like they just have to go something safer. Like, perhaps pick their warrior now, plus like maybe a mage. Uh, you know, or kill Fos. Now. <laughs> 
All right, I'm just not even gonna say anything. We're just gonna wait. Let's just wait. Show me potato salad. Let's go. <laughs> okay, that's actually a pretty pretty good response. Alarak Diva. Um, that's like no range damage though against a fairly heavy ranged comp. You know, Diva's got a lot of dive. She's got a lot of shrine control with her bomb. An Alarak, you know, I guess he has a better range, but he's just going to be tickling with his electricity. He needs to land that combo for sure. But uh, I'm actually. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like the Zard has put them in a little bit of an awkward situation unless they went with that, um, what is it, half troll, half ogre? Yeah, I mean, the D, you know, we, we've been talking about where Malfield fits in. I still feel like Diva shows up uh, in an interesting spot. We're not entirely sure where she lands. Yeah. But yeah, their they're engage and setup is going to be pretty wonky, all considered. I'm really con curious to see where they run their comp out. Mm hmm oh there's the diablo yeah. and sonia man flame is lame is actually unkillable at this point like that's so scary like sonia has so much self-sustain Val is going to be unkillable with the ariel and tacitar diablo has his devil's due talent and he's going to be nigh unkillable as well this alarak is going to have to put on his like six backpacks to try to carry the damage on this uh for this team because i'm expecting a warrior to come through now right I mean, I, that's how I would try to play it for sure. But I mean, I'd guess Chogo on that didn't pan out some little. Unless they're just hard trying hard. the wild draft and making Zarya and Diva kind of like the frontline slash warriors hard engage of this comp. But I'm not sure how well that will work out. We'll have to see. Um, I mean, what damage Kings... deal are you... Sorry? Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, Guardian of Ancient Kings will get a little bit of value here. You know, we've got the Diablo, we've got the Sonya, Ariel Detainment Strike as well. So. Yeah. I'm telling you, Chogol would have been Oof. amazing. Okay, so Bring Back J-House Draft is definitely substandard. <laughs> it's a little bit different. But, you know, they've got a lot of damage, and if they're able to get these long fights, Kael'thas may gain a lot of value. You know, diva has got quite a bit of shrine control, but if... It doesn't go their way early. Like Flame is Lame just has such a safe comp, right? They've, they've got unlimited healing. They've got self sustain across like almost all of their heroes. Like they have a very easy comp to execute, and I think that goes a very long way in uh, teams that have you know formed pretty, um, I guess recently. They haven't been yeah. together for a really long time, so I'm giving this one to Flame is Lame for sure. I'm gonna have to go ahead and agree with you there, Kala. I mean, this when you draft a composition like Diablo, Sonya, Vala, Tassadar, Ariel, on oh, Infernal Shrines? <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah. It, it immediately becomes your game to lose. And when you're going up against this unorthodox composition, I'm not sure how D.Va gets value under this kind of pressure, but we're about yeah. to find out. Over on the left side, we have the members of Flame is Lame. Vala is being played by Legend. Deadly Ice is on Sonya, Trap Queen, Plantacidar. Shot will be leading the charge on Diablo and Dark Chimera, the Angel of Hope, playing Ari. And on the right in red, we have Bring Back J. Howe. We got Lemmy DPS playing the D.Va, Zane Hyde on Zarya, Revolve to Solve playing Kael'thas. I don't even lift on that Uther, and King playing Alarak. <laughs> I'm impressed with the names on, on, on Bring Back J. Howe. Yeah, I too. like how Lemmy DPS is playing the warrior, the, the quote tank of this composition. Feels bad. I know that I, feel, bro. I like how I get to exclaim Uther's name. Don't even live. Yeah. Well, he's gonna try to flex for sure in his Uther. You get the right stun. Definitely set up some plate shots. Rotating around in the lane. No setup surprise gank from Diablo. Zarya goes fishing, finds Legend. He spins around a little bit. He's like, oh, you got, you got me, guys. This is nice. And uh, standard talents, I would say, coming across the board. And actually, the combo from Alarak landing on Legend. But here's the safety of the comp that Flame is Lame has. There's pretty much the unlimited sustain. Perfect engagement by Bring Back j -Hell, but it's difficult to follow up. Yeah, Dark Chimera's Ariel is a sight to behold in the dimensional shift at the last possible moment. Saves the bacon of Trap Queen. Not even close, bro. Yeah. And uh, like that's going to be so scary if Bring Back J-Hell can land the Alarak combo plus the Gravity Lapse onto a target. Like, they should die at that point, but that's that's pretty much like, that's what they're banking on, right? Like, that's the ideal situation for themselves. 
That's what you hope for. Let me DPS jumps in again, zips around a little bit, not able to set up much of an engagement. Shots hanging around. You know if Diva goes in, in the wrong spot, that shadow charge is gonna be there. So I'm really curious to see what kind of value uh Diva's gonna be able to bring to the tape. Four members of Bring Back J Hound hanging out mid. Zarya slows, tries to slow down the rotation, only dismounts the legend. Dark Chimera's low on hope though. This is when you go in. Yeah, let me DPS looking to hit the nitrous there. You know, jostles around the lineup of Flame is Lane, but nothing too substantial coming out to bring back Jhow and uh, this middle lane just kind of equalizing here as both teams are rotating down. Shrine is spawning mid top. Seems pretty much even on experience. The uh, 1v1 war between Sony and Alarak is an interesting one. Uh, I think as long as they play their positions properly, there shouldn't be a takedown either way, turning that into a very much skill-based matchup. Level 4, though, should be here sooner for Flame is Lame, and that can give them an advantage over the next Punisher. Now, bring back Jeho, sending D.Va down to the bottom lane to clear out this wave to kind of just force Flame is Lame to either hard commit or send somebody down. It looked like Shot was interested in going down, but no, it's Legend that's going to catch that sub. So, bring back Jeho now, rotating everybody else back to the Shrine, and I'm hoping to see a fight here. You know, I would like to see both these teams contest because I think it's both in their favor. Uh, even though Flame is Lame does have the better comp for Shrine contest, Deadly Ice going in on a King, taking a little bit of damage there, the Alarak is, but uh, both these teams posturing up for the Shrine here. Overpower goes in from shot. Let me DPS six round. Has the bomb available to him. Goes ahead and drops it. The silence goes in on Sonya. They are able to escape the bomb. Ariel's out of hope right now. Let me DPS jumps back into the mech with only 10 defenders though. Four flame is laying. They could definitely steal this one away with some poke. Trap Queen steps in here, comes Deadly Ice, let me DPS trying to zone out what they can. The silence goes in from the Discord Strike, Deadly Ice, the Detainment Strike though, sets up the destruction of the tank and let me DPS is a long way from home. First takedown, Flame is Lame. And this first run is definitely going over to Flame is Lame here. 38, 39, and now 40 of the monkeys. And the Mortar Punisher goes over to them. Uh, the pre-tap from uh, Sonya and Diablo was just enough to you know, start another team fight there and secure the win. Bring back Jha, falling a little bit behind here. One level advantage now going over to Flame is Lane. Sonya rotating to the top lane, picking up that soak, and uh, pretty much just a wall looking to be picked up for Flame is Lane here. They might rotate down, and it looks like they are taking away the uh, Kazra camp from bring back Jhow and just looking to control this mid bottom rotation from uh, BBJ. <laughs> That's kind of funny. It's a uh, amateur player. <laughs> I like the uh, decision in that overstay there, Welcome. They got the wall and it's the standard amount of value that one could hope for. You back away, establish pressure elsewhere. One thing I'd point out about that last Punisher phase though, Vala Legend was in the bottom lane at the very beginning. Yep. Showed on the map, putting out the wave. I feel like that should have been the green light for uh, Bring Back Jhow to go in, but Shad is going to try to lead the charge. See the defense matrix slow down the assault from Legend. No real damage though. On the I mean, you're absolutely right about it because they initiated the uh, the swap there, right? Like, D.Va went bottom to clear out uh, the wave to force it in for Flame is Lame, and then they responded with the Vala. So yeah, Bring Back Jhow could have also just forced a fight on that shrine early while Vala was, Vala was bottom. I think that would have been a really good call, but uh, hindsight 2020, right? Yeah, I mean, Vala would have showed up like uh, that Donald Glover, Glover gif where like he shows up and like the whole apartment's on fire and he's just like, oh, the pizza box. <laughs> oh Man, God. that's how it should have been, especially with Kale Blast on your team. True. But be that as it may, level lead and a tier advantage for the moment in favor of Flame is Lane. Level 7 shouldn't be here by the time the next Punisher phase shows up. Shot could find himself in an interesting spot. Uses the Shadow Charge off of Zarya's positioning. He was trying to flank oh. to get out of there. Uh, the spear just missing on this top side too. <laughs> Alarak and Sonya are having quite the duel in this top lane if you're having a look at it. Uh, but yeah, at this point, Sonya, she actually just tapped, so not going to be available for the shrine if it comes up really soon here. So. And you pointed out the success that Sonya and Diablo had last time because of their taps, so that could have a subtle but significant impact yep. over this next big team fight. Bruiser Camp should get picked up. An unlucky roll with the dice sends the next shrine to the top lane, so it'll be easy for bring back Jhao to take care of this. You don't have Alarak around, you really want telekinesis in that situation. The variant thinking, shot showing some shots. <laughs> You're right, uh, you know, the the Fallen Shaman camp picked up for Flame is Lame. It's going to help them establish some lane control, but I do think you're right. You know, Kael'thas is going to fairly easily destroy it. The Gravity Lap landing onto Sonya, but no real follow-up damage there. Crown goes out, Dark Chimera fills up a little bit of the health bar from Sonya, but uh, no taps available, so Flame is Lame needs to push in and get this Sonya some healing. 
Bring back Jay Howard treading on dangerous ground right now. Every second that goes on is another second that Heroics could be here. The, the telekinesis detainment or this core strike is gonna miss. Daily Ice still at half health. Zarya throws on the personal shield, gets charged up one energy. Shots gonna start to back away. Lame is lame, have no reason to be too aggressive here with their heroics. Not too nope. far off after this wave, and, they should oh have a gosh. significant advantage. And this is what you want when your flame is lame. Like they just traded out health bars like that, and they have the sustain cup. Look at Uther's mana. He's up almost nothing. He shadow charge goes out onto Zarya, but now the disengage from bring back Jehau, and Flame is lame is exactly where they want to be. They have their heroics. This is their shrine. Lightning Breath is going to be the heroic of choice for Diablo. I'm a little surprised to see that. Um, even if I was planning on going Lightning Breath, in that situation, when you see all the members of the enemy team lining themselves up for a heroic disadvantage team fight in a tight space, I'm strongly considering snapping the, the Apocalypse. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not too sure about that one. Maybe he's just... It would be a raw Apocalypse every time, right? They have, like, no way of locking down a single target, so I can kind of see a bit of the justification there, but I'm not sure... You know, honestly, we'll just have to see how it pays off, so I, I think I'm with you, though. Yeah, I mean, unless the Lightning Breath is going to confirm a takedown, all you're doing is taking away the threat that Diablo brings to the table away from your team. He's not shadow charging while he's doing Lightning Breath, he's True. just there. Yeah. So I'm curious to see what kind of value to get out of that. I like the split pressure effort, it helps them to the middle fort. Revolve the solvent, let me DPS rotate down, and they're just Bible thumping away and watching uh, <laughs> Flame is Lame steal the fort and leave. Telekinesis is available for this Alarak. Discord strike comes out. He needs to escape this situation here. Four rotate for Flame is Lamb and shot looking for that Alarak. And now the rotation from Bring Back Jayhaw coming out. The Shadow Tard and the Overpower comes through. And Alarak goes down. Level 10 is now available for Bring Back Jayhaw. Are they going to try to turn this? Zarya and Uther are coming down, but I think it's just too little too late. Yeah, you just saw shot lumber ever forward. And I was like, <laughs> once he gets into that Q range, it's about to be a bad day for old Alarak. I'm actually a little surprised that Flame is Lame didn't press that issue more. Uh, there was a sizable window where they had their level 10 heroics and Bring Back Jayhaw didn't. I think they might have been able to get some takedowns over that top fort rather than splitting off. But uh, it's nice to see in general that Flame is Lame know how to play conservatively and, and with the macro in mind over aggressive team fight. No, you're absolutely right. And at this point, it's Bring Back Jayhaw's turn to try to start a fight. The uh, Expulsion Zone comes down, a shot is a little bit caught out, and Sonya is just pushing this top court. Flame is Lane need to back off. You know, if they lose the Diablo only here, it's not the end of the world. But Shadow Charge comes out, and Shot is now making his way to safety. And there's the boot from Dave, from Diva puts Diablo in itself spot. The Crystal Age just goes down. Bunny Hop not getting the value or setting up a takedown today at Hope for Divine Storm. I don't even live steps forward. Drops oh the hammer gosh. and drops himself. King is going to be the next target. The Flame Strike just gets avoided by Dark Chimera, who is apparently forever on oh, Oreo. No. And Zarya walked into a multi shot that just sprayed him right in the face. Like, the one pick got them the level 13, and that was the 13 to 11 advantage that they were looking for, and that was a 4v5, or 5v4, 4v5, 4v5 for Flame is Lame, and they won. Estonia was just pushing the top lane the entire time, gaining them that experience that they needed in order to swing that team fight. and Lauren, we're just seeing, I think this is actually mainly a draft issue with this game. Yeah, I mean, we were wondering about this gadget composition, how effective it would be in team fights, and I think we saw some insight towards that answer. That is a 4v5 advantage in favor of bring back Jihau that they asked for. They, they wanted yeah. that team fight and uh, didn't go the way they thought it. Yeah, the spear and spin going out. Deadly Ice just having a heyday on the, uh, I guess, it seems like the back line, but it's the front line of bring back Jihau and, you know, the wrath comes out, but uh, no kills secured. And now this shrine, uh, Flame is Lamb, are just looking to pick this up. They have the 13 advantage. If you're bring back Jayhaw at this point, like, you know, this next Punisher is just going to be on the middle wall here, and Z Zarya gets caught there by the spear and goes down, and this is looking pretty tragic for bring back Jayhaw. I think we just need to try to get some experience, get that 13, and look for a fight here. Curiosity killed the cat and yeah. Zarya. Zane Hyde stepped a little too close to the fire and uh, was deposited into the garbage can. <laughs> for their trouble. And that'll be an arcane punisher with a sizable level advantage, all favoring Flame is Lame, who are gonna be rocking and rolling down his mid lane. Yeah, the arcane punisher is a scary one for sure. Like, if you're Flame is Lame at this point, you have the uh, talent advantage, you're looking at a keep. 
Yeah, why not? I mean, overstay. Yeah. You see the bomb go in, there's the bunny hop, or the bomb will be available for Diva. It drops now. The Crystal Ages actually leaves Deadly Ice in a tough spot. The bomb explodes, but it's not going to be enough to set up a takedown. And there's a lot to worry about. Outside of that, if you're on the side of bringing back J-How, they do take down the Arcane Punisher, limiting the damage. But without their 13s, I don't know if they want to chase this situation. No. And the Expulsion Zone plus plus that bomb to completely zone away Flamer's Lane was actually perfect. Bring back J-Hell were able to completely kill the Punisher and they saved their keep because of it. If that happened any other way, I actually think that they would have lost their keep almost definitively there. So nice job by Bring Back J-Hell to keep themselves in this game. Um, but honestly, the next fight that they're going to get is probably like a 13 to 16. Yeah, it feels bad when the best case scenario is to be down two tiers, but they go into this team fight, they'd rather be down one than yep. two. They're gambling it all. <laughs> Deadly Ice hanging out, Counter-Strike goes in, not able to set up too much. Diva off screen is going to get rocked for their trouble. King tries to put on the personal shield, trying to help their teammates out. Bio Condio says the members of Bring Back J-How to King. Two heroes taken down in a uh, low percentage chance of success team fight. And I liked the call by Bring Back J-How there to fight uh, 13, or sorry, uh, 10 to 13 instead of the 13 to 16, because it's just better. And actually, that being said, the Shadow Charge goes out onto Kale Thos. He stepped forward a little bit too much, and now Flame is Lame is looking at the keep, and they might even look to take a little bit more than the keep. But I liked the call to take that, third, or like I said, the 10 to 13 fight instead of the 13 to 16. I think that was the better call, but Bring Back J-How, it just seemed too forced, right? Like, that was basically on the structures of Flame is Lame. They were so far up in that fight. And, you know, as soon as you lose any little inkling of the team fight, Ball is just going to chase you down forever, right? So, difficult. I mean, Kala, I again would echo, it's rough when best case scenario is to be <laughs> down two tiers. <laughs> yeah. They tried to avoid the outcome that uh, ultimately was to be. They lose a team fight. The middle keep is nine takedowns, zero. And it just seems like bringing back J-How are trying to come up with answers on how they set up engagement. And it comes with, I think it comes with the out number. The Bruiser Camp was just picked up. I'm going all in right now if I'm bringing back J-How. They try to close out the takedown on shot, but he is just tanky thanks to this lightning breath. They get the kill 3v5 pretty much. Oh, oh my, my gosh, and now Sonya 1v4 on top of the whole uh, roster of bring back J-How is shy of one, and the spin is just healing him by so much. Deadly Ice just having a, a heyday on the back line of bring back J-How, and now the fight is just completely turning in Flame is Lame's favor, and uh, I think this is going to spell the beginning of the end of the game here. Yeah, I think the members of Flame is Lame are going to wholesale ignore the next objective Heroes phase. They already have catapults walking towards the key. Yeah. Heroes yeah. down. Only let me DPS on Diva alive. Kael'thas is back to business, but I do not think the Flame Mage is going to be enough to stop this one, Kyle. Flame is lame. Looking pretty good. Yeah, I think that's a direct shot at their Kael'thas, is it not? <laughs> hey. Yeah, yeah, uh, no, but uh, I, I do think that that one is just a little bit of a... Or not even a little bit, I'm not... I think that one was a draft misstep for sure. You know, it resulted in uh, like a four level, excuse me, differential there. And, uh, you know, the, the composition for Flame is Lame on Infernal Shrines was like actually best in slot across the board. So, yeah, I mean, that that is, <laughs> it's kind of funny that Flame is Lame is on this team because that's pretty much the God count. And they're, yeah. they're, and Shot and I have this inside joke. We played a game where he told me to draft. He, me and it, me, him, and Environment won this game. He said, "Draft me the God Comp," and we put this this comp together to just entirely stomp. And and it felt like this is one of those situations where it's yep. like, if I could draft the perfect composition for Infernal Shrines, you pretty much got it in Flame yeah. is Land's composition. And uh, again, I would say, I'm not gonna say that Bring Back J Hal's comp was troll. It no. definitely wasn't optimal. No, but if you bring a troll comp in the hero site these days, it's going to get the Kimbe Matumbo. You're going to get bodied. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, we saw like the, I don't know, like bring back J-How, it seemed like they had a fairly linear win condition, right? Like the only way that they're actually going to kill somebody was with a um, telekinesis discord strike and then a gravity lapse follow up. So like the, the Alarok and the Kael'thas just basically doing all the damage there, right? And we saw that happen like one time, but it wasn't even coordinated um, to the extent to, to garner a kill. And, you know, at that point, we saw Alarak walk top and he's like, okay, well, there goes our win condition. See you guys. Like, uh, <laughs> I guess you have to shine, you know what I'm saying? But, like, 
and then they weren't able to find that win condition at the shrine either. And you know, as soon as the first one hit, we saw like a one level differential, right? And you made the comment that uh, you know Diva rotated bottom during that first shrine, and they could have forced that five v four fight there. I actually think that was the best case scenario for them, and tiny bit of a missed situation there. Um, but yeah, I would mainly chalk that one up to draft. Yeah, I mean, I, I again would be curious to see what the statistic is. But Kyle, I've never seen a situation where a team takes two warriors that do not have a stun win against a team that has a warrior, at least a warrior with with a stun. I've just never seen it happen. Wait, sorry, could you repeat that one more time? When a team takes two warriors and they don't have a stun between the two of them, uh huh, and the enemy team has at least one warrior that has a stun, the team that has the warrior with the stun always wins. I've seen it the opposite way and only under one circumstance, and it's the team with the warrior with the stun has no global and they have Uther. Okay. But that's like, we're we're like, that is so specific, it's not even I, funny, right? I, like, I, yeah, I I'm 100% with like, you, though. Like, that's, in, yeah, I agree. When you commit two-fifths of your, your, your draft to a front line that can't lock down and yeah. set up kills,